Today is December the 7th, and it is, I don't have the time, but I believe it's 536. 536. Will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance at this time? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Marisa Bautista, present. Melissa Michi, present. present. Gail Edgar Rodriguez, yes, here. Present. Armando Lopez, absent. Dr. Martha Villarreal, present. present. David Vasquez, present. present. We have a quorum. Okay. Uh, we don't have any citizens. Yes, yes, we do. We have joining us Miriam Castillo from the Economic Development Department, and she's gonna tell us about uh, some uh, murals that are gonna be done by Oh, Miriam? Yes, um, it is Maria, I'm sorry. Uh, it is Maria, yes. Oh, hi, thank you, Ms. Maria, yes, and thank you, uh, members of the board. Um, like Ms. Maria mentioned, that I'm, I'm with the Economic Development Department, and as you all know, the downtown church um, continues to uh, work for, for our downtown. And there is this one particular project um, that they will be launching. It is my understanding that some of the members are already aware of the program um, for the mural art program. <coughs> and what this program is, um, through the TIF, they will be allocating some funding um, to um, pretty much go on an RFP asking artists to participate and create uh, murals um, in downtown Laredo and with, with different objectives, right? Um, to create uh, to create pace making for downtown, um, in a way to promote Laredo as well as a destination for locals and, um, you know, um, in a way also to create opportunities for, uh, to stimulate economic growth in the area. So this program and or in the process of finalizing the, the RFP, but um, part of the evaluation and part of the selection process um, involves, um, um, you know, the Fine Arts and Culture Commission. Um, um, and please stop me at any time if you have any questions. Um, like I mentioned, it, it is my understanding that some of you are already aware of this program um, and what this is, uh, the pretty much the Arts and Culture Commission will be part of the, the, the committee. And in the event that uh, there is a subcommittee that is formed through the commission, you know, um, that it's also, um, I guess, recommended. Um, the, what, what we would like to also um, recommend is that uh, the, the group that will be evaluating these applications and uh, the submissions that are received um, to the city, um, that it includes a representative from Laredo Main Street and one of the um, appointees by the, the, the church number one board. And pretty much what it will entail is, you know, the, the group, the committee will review the applications and you all will make recommendations to, to the church board. Um, I will be more than glad to um, share the final um, scope of the program with all of the board members. And um, yeah, you know, just wanted to take this opportunity to meet all of you and also to give you a brief, um, I guess, recap on, on, on this program and and I look forward to, you know, uh, the launching of the program and, and working with, with the commission. Do we have a timeline for this project? I'm sorry? A timeline? Do we have a timeline? Yes, um, we're hoping that we can go to our um, sometime um, at the end of this month um, and I will share also the, the actual um, timeline that we're looking at um, and let me just open it up to give you the, the exact um, I guess months that we are looking at just one second okay all right all right um, we're ready to review the minutes and approve the minutes 
Um, do how many murals are you all wanting to fulfill through this program? Um, there's gonna be different tiers, and, and they have um, already um, allocated uh, several locations. I believe it is my understanding that it's a total of um, six murals, if I'm not mistaken, um, in different parts of the of the city. Um, and there's different tiers, right? Because they, they all come in different sizes. So through the through the program, uh, they're gonna have four different uh, types of murals: a small, mid-sized, the large, and, and extra large murals. Um, I will be more than glad to share with you as well the exact locations that have been um, identified by the board. Um, the property owners are already um, aware as well. This will be on private property. And uh, I'll be more than glad to share all of the, the scope of this program as soon as it is finalized and, and posted. Maybe we can have you give a formal presentation in January, Miriam. Is, what would that yes, be? Yes, absolutely. Yes. That's a good idea. Yes. Uh, so kind of a, a very brief, um, um, a very brief uh, timeline that we're looking at um, is uh, so the the walls have already been identified. They started this program. In fact, they started uh, putting together this program back in October, if I'm not mistaken. We're hoping that we can release the RFP in December um, and um, allow for for applications, you know, throughout December and mid January. And that's when um, we, you, you as, a, as a commission will be evaluating um, those applications at your, hopefully at your January meeting. If needed, um, maybe, I don't know, um, a special meeting can be a call to review the applications. And then um, the recommend, it is our intent, intent that the recommendations to the church board will be made also at the January meeting, if the dates align. Mary, but you you don't need the whole commission. You need uh, just a couple of them, three. Um, you know, it can be the whole commission. Um, it can also be you can follow the format of um, creating a subcommittee. You know, just for this project, where there is two, three members of the commission, one member from Laredo Main Street, and a member from the church board. I think it would be great if the whole commission could be involved. I think so too. Be great. That'd be nice. No. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the art. So it would be great if we could all yeah. look at, the, you know, applications and, and talk about them and whatever. I mean, I think that would be good. I agree. Do you all have a copy of our, of our minutes, our last minutes? No. Because, uh, you know, in order for us to approve it, I think everybody should read them. Should read them. You don't have them, right? They, no. were, they were sent to them. Prior oh, to okay. Do you all so have know they, a copy they of the minutes so that we can review them and approve them? Can they hear me? Can you hear me? No, they can't hear me. Can you move them? I think the speaker. All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. No, they say they say they're not. They say yes. Anybody know sign language? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Okay. okay, good. Did you all have a chance to read the minutes so that we can approve the minutes from the last meeting? Yes. Yes. In October. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Does anybody wish to make a a motion to approve them? I'll make a motion to approve or second. All right, been moved and seconded that we approve our minutes. All right, now for the uh, meeting today. Uh, first of all, I'm glad to see Miss uh, Marisa Bautista because I know I recommended you to to your precinct. So she did come on board. She, she took her oath already. Yes. yes. Wow, that's Today. Wonderful. Well, yes. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I, I, I just heard that we lost how many? Mr. <laughs> Shaw and Julio. And two. And yes, so two we're papers. short two or we're and short three? Three. 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 Who's three? Yes. 
All right. If if you will let me know who the, their member, their uh, uh, representatives, yeah, representatives are, so that I can maybe ask you all if you know anybody that you would like to have on board, so that maybe we can contact uh, the members, uh, the uh, community. The, what do they call them? Council members. Yeah. yeah. All right. What districts? I'm yeah, sorry, the what district. districts are not represented right the now? Mayor? The mayor? Uh, let me see who else. District. District. The mayor, District 5, Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. yeah, Gutierrez. Yes, and District 7, Vanessa mm -hmm. Perez. Well, who, who does she come in for? I'm uh, an assistant of our district. Who is it? Uh, oh, because yeah. I had recommended her to, but yeah. to Vanessa. Right, somebody now. <laughs> somebody, beat her, somebody beat her to it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, so that means I can contact with them. Okay. Uh, what do we have for today? Um, uh, presentation of the uh, project plan for uh, the project plan for the uh, Lafayette uh, Bridge. Who's presenting that? That's that's Elia from Up Art Studio. Oh, okay. Okay. Elia, you're on. <laughs> yes, I'm here. <laughs> you're on. <laughs> well, you're next. Better, like, things are freezing, so I'm going to stop my video uh -huh. um, just in case that's causing it to freeze on my end. And I'm going to share. Should I share my screen? Yes. Yes, that would be okay. Can you all see it? Yes. 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 You have a copy. Okay. Yes. No. Okay. Well, first of all, um, thank you all for being here. Um, I am excited to uh, present the project plan for the Lafayette Bridge Painting and Lighting Public Art Project. I'm sure you all um, have some questions. Um, I know last week, or not last week, but um, we all were supposed to meet last time. There was a quorum. There were a lot of questions, and so um, I, I'm happy to go through everything again. Um, the the project. So we were hired. There was an RFQ that came out for the management of this project, and we applied, and we were awarded the contract to manage the project. And so we worked closely with Council Member Cigarroa and um, also kept uh, the city staff apprised of everything that, you know, the decisions that were being made. And uh, the plan has already been presented to Council Member Cigarroa as well as staff, you know, engineering, uh, Maria and Eileen. Um, and so the, the contents here, you know, we talk about there's an introduction, um, the goals, of this project, the scope, you know, our scope and then the, the, the ongoing scope. Um, we looked at the location and siting considerations. We, we made multiple trips to Laredo. Um, we have a schedule and timeline. Um, there's going to be an artist selection process, budget and funding sources, uh, community engagement, marketing communications, and then, um, you know, this is stakeholders conclusion. And there's an appendix. And I think the important thing to know is that the majority of funds for this project are coming out of the District 8 discretionary funds. And so we weren't really, like, we didn't have to follow the master plan, but we made the decision along with council member Cigar uh, to try to stick to the process of the master plan as closely as possible. And so um, with the, you know, sticking to the master plan means that we do a, a local call and we do community engagement and we do all these pieces because we wanted to see a project pull through um, going through that process, even though it's not the type of funds that would normally require this kind of process. So I just wanted to make sure that you all are aware of that. Um, so this introduction um, just, you know, just is an overview of the project. Essentially, it's Lafayette Street Bridge. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you all are with the area, but there's, um, in that area, there's a lot of like parcels that are different uses. Most of them are recreational um, or community oriented. And so the idea is that this art project would kind of help bridge all of those um, components together. Uh, um, there are 17 columns in total. 
And the role of um, the Fine Arts and Culture Commission, you guys, is to um, you know review this plan, see if there's anything that sticks out that maybe doesn't sound right to you guys, or you know anything like that that we should be aware of. Um, but we, we do think it's a pretty solid plan. Um, in terms of the goals, um, we did workshop this with Councilmember Cigarroa and staff, and the goals that we came up with were that this project should establish a local landmark, enrich the quality of life of the local residents, um, especially in that neighborhood um, of Las Cataranas, integration of art into the infrastructure, cohesion and community engagement, enhancing the park area. And um, those were those were the primary goals. You, know, you could, I don't know if you all, if anybody's read it, yet, but we kind of have some sub goals under each of those categories. And um, so essentially the project's commitment is to creating a meaningful and sustainable impact on the neighborhood. And you know, focusing on the establishment of a local landmark and enriching the quality of life and integrating the art with the infrastructure. This was, this was really important to council members of the uh, in section three, um, we discuss the scope, and this is this is this, this is going through the scope um, beyond where we're at now in the process. So after um, you know we all we get you, you guys' approval, we then will um, go to you know finalizing the design and, and doing an open call for the artists and preparing the site. You know, well once once the artists are selected and all that, we're a little bit further down the process, and that'll also include. You know, preparing the site and making sure that there's uh, safety, you know, protocols that are implemented. Then the murals implemented. Um, as the project manager, we make sure that there's quality assurance because we want this project to last and look good for as long as possible. And then um, the project is then sealed um, with a clear coat to protect it. And so with the design finalization, like right now you'll see in this plan, there's like some initial concepts, but the idea is to take these initial concepts, vet them through you all, do some community engagement where we have members of the community as well as local artists contribute to what does the final design really look like. like we have an idea of generally what it will look like, but really getting the input from the local community to finalize those details. Um, and let me see what else we have here. And then we go into the roles and responsibilities of everybody. Um, you all, um, the Fine Arts and Culture Commission, as you know, stated in the, in, the, in the plan, you guys are here to provide oversight to this process. And um, just let us know if there's, again, anything that stands out um, at you. Um, council member and the city, city staff, they, you know, they provide oversight and budgetary approvals and community represent, representation. We're leading the project design, artist coordination, and mural execution, as well as safety and site preparation. We have a safety coordinator who comes and does a whole safety plan, and anybody that's involved gets a safety briefing, and there's safety briefings every day. You know, we're working with heavy equipment, we're working with, uh, parts of this is closed off to traffic, but there's a part that's not, so we have to coordinate with the city on that as well. Um, and then there's the quality assurance as well. And then local artists are going to help bring the new world concepts to life on the overpass, and they're going to give input on the final design as well. Community stakeholders will engage in the mural selection. Most likely, we'll have like two different options for the community to help decide which is the option that they want to go um, go to, and then we'll also you know engage with the community again to like make sure that the design is culturally sensitive and appropriate for the neighborhood that it's in. And then there's also um, ideally an LED lighting uh, component as well. Um, we have been working with a local contractor. Um, there have been you know some a, a few different discussions about that, but definitely um, I know that Councilmember Cigarroa feels like the lighting is a is a major component of this project, and she's def definitely a proponent of you know it being lit up you know very nicely. Um, whether we use the contractor that did this initially for us or not, that's to be determined. But it is important to her that there is lighting, a lighting component in this. So maybe there is an open bid, or maybe we get more quotes or something before we move forward on that part. And then um, two of the columns, 
or four. <laughs> we don't know, we have to code measurements again. Um, maybe in Union Pacific right away. And so that's, a, that's another you know, element slash challenge. Uh, we, did, we just completed a mural for the city of Victoria on an underpass there. And also it was right by Union Pacific property. So we have literally experience from a month ago on what that takes to work with them. Um, it can be a costly endeavor, but if the city works closely with them, they can make it not as costly, I think. Um, okay, and then the next part is the artist selection approach, that the artist selection approach will follow the, um, the process in the master plan, uh, work, you know, work, work for word, basically. Um, you'll see in here, that in, later in here, that I've got like what the artist open call, I literally just copy and pasted it from the, open, from the master plan, so that'll follow the master plan. And then but did, we did discuss initially with the council member, like, do we want to follow the master plan on this? Do we want to do an open call? Do you want to make it an invitational? Do we do it in-house? We need our artists. And, um, you know, after presenting the options to her, she kind of felt like, well, I think it'd be good for you all and your lead artists to kind of help lead the project, but let's involve local artists. Because on the next, in the next section, it's about products that we're going to be using. and. You know, traditionally murals are painted with latex and aerosol paint, or modern day murals are, and but we're using a mineral paint. And we did this in Victoria as well, and the reason that we use the mineral paint is multitude of reasons, but mainly because it is guaranteed to not fade for 20 years. So the maintenance um, required for that kind of paint is, I mean, that's like the clear choice in my mind. It was also the clear choice for the council member. Um, to use something that's really going to be long lasting. Because if we were to use latex, even if we clear coat it, the longest you're probably going to get out of it without it fading is going to be seven to 10 years. And lighting, which I mentioned earlier, um, you'll see on the next page, you know, those are some pretty high numbers. Um, but, um, but the council member wanted me to, you know, basically reiterate that those that there are funds to cover that she does have funds in her discretionary funds um, to cover that piece um, we are going to work on trying to get the cost down um, but again you know it's an important element for her so we really want to um, keep that in um, and we'll, we'll work on on the cost um, as we move forward um, I've already mentioned the Pacific this year kind of goes into more detail just about our experience with them there's they require all kinds of things, but at the end of the day, um, we can work with them. We're, our team is all completely now certified to work on Union Pacific property. Um, so that makes things a little bit easier and we can help get local artists also um, certified to, um, to work on, on the property. And then implementation plan next steps would be um, after we receive you all's um, approval We'll then move to the artist selection process. Um, we're working right now on the documents for that so that um, we can, you know, put that call out hopefully this month. Um, they, the way that we're looking at it and as we did in Victoria is that it's a professional development opportunity for local artists. Um, it is a paid professional development opportunity for local artists. Um, again, we, worked, we just recently worked with this material um, it was new for our artists and they did have, um, there was definitely a learning curve, I should say. And, you know, the artists kind of joke like, ah, oh, I never want to work with this paint again. But we will, because there's probably not a lot of artists know how to work with this. So it's a, it's a great opportunity to help grow the artists in Laredo um, and, and, and teaching them how to work with this paint. And so the artist selection process, just to refresh your memory, um, you know, we'll convene a selection committee, and that's inclusive of at least one member from the Fine Arts and Culture, Culture Committee uh, Commission. Um, but there's, you know, also like members of the community, and you know, it's usually about anywhere from five to seven uh, people that we will have on that committee. So that's a, also a next step. Um, we will conduct artist interviews or presentations, and then allow the shortlisted artists to kind of, you know, pitch their skill set and you know, showcase previous work. And then we'll finalize the artists and uh, artists for artists for artists for the project based on uh, the committee recommendations, and then obtain the fine arts and culture. Keeps coming up. Hi, 
design. Once we have local artists selected, we'll work with the community, we'll work with the local artists to refine um, the designs. And again, to you all for the final approval. And we will you know, make any necessary design modifications based on the feedback that we receive from you all. And then um, the next part or the next step after that will be the mural implementation. And that'll be, you know, we'll prepare the site that will include you know, pressure washing the site, making sure the area is clean and safe. And um, then we'll start painting it. And that'll determine how long it'll take. It could take anywhere from a month to three months to paint it. Uh, it's roughly 10,000 square feet if we paint only the columns. It's 25,000 square feet if we also paint the beams. And so you'll see some photos in here, or some renderings in here of what that might look like. And then after the mural installation, and then there's you know, the quality insurance, then we'll hear through it, add that protective layer that will help, um, you know, tag, or, you know, if there's a feed on it, then we'll be able to remove it. Uh, whoever's responsible for the maintenance will be able to remove it. And then um, lastly, we'll be, you know, we'll be documenting the process. Hopefully there'll be some media around it and then there'll be a community celebration. I'll stop there briefly. I've been a lot of talking just to see if there's any initial questions before I move on to the location. Um, so Eddie, yeah, I just want to say that, um, you know, last time we met, uh, you and I had a, a, a long discussion about the different types of things. First of all, thank you for the presentation. Again, I know it's a, it's a lengthy one. But um, I do want to say that um, you know we're you know in talking to councilwoman and then also just going through the presentation. Uh, I'm excited. I'm actually looking at the Lafayette Street Bridge right now, um, and um, yeah, it's definitely a place that I think is going to be a good part of the project. So uh, kudos to you and your team for putting the project together uh, or the proposal. Um, and uh, I just. I wanted to make that point as I'm looking at the La Bella Street Bridge right now, like um, this area definitely needs that improvement. Thank you so much, Mr. Vasquez. I appreciate that. I know you um, you um, clearly read through the plan and it's it was good that you know to, to hear your questions and concerns and to be able to talk through them. So I, I appreciate that discussion as well and the, and the engagement. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay, I'll move on then. Um, so then. Elia, are you there? Uh, he's cutting out. Looks like she's dropped the call. She's probably trying to get back in. Last week, um, about the paint, 
and the durability of the paint because of the elements, because of the heat, because of the type of climate that we have here in Laredo. And so um, I, I wanted to make sure that we were getting quality paint for what we're paying. Uh, if you look at the budget, I went straight to the budget and wanted to make sure that that was gonna get covered uh, properly through, through the budgeting process, but also the maintenance of these murals after the fact, because once they're up, they're up. Um, and then and then the lighting portion. So this is just some initial cost, but I was, um, just my opinion is I'm satisfied with the proposal. And um, um, I, I, I feel we should move forward with it. That's just my, my initial thought. Yeah, on the list. I don't know if y'all have anything that you wanted to add. Yeah, well, we had. Um, can you all hear me now? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm so sorry. Oh, no. I think my internet dropped. I apologize. Okay, yeah. We lost your screen, too. It kind of stopped at the. Oh, there it is. There it is. No, we didn't see that one yet. Oh, y'all didn't see this at all? Yeah. No. Okay, I'm going to read it for that one. Yeah, we, we got lost right there. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Miami right now, and um, it's our basil, so it's a little crazy over here. So I know the internet might have issues. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry for that. Um, so what I was saying here is that we've looked at, you know, this just kind of describes each of the, you know, location description of the city of Laredo, District 8, Cantaranas neighborhood, and the overpass. And, you know, we know that there's a, a, a cultural and historical significance to the neighborhood. Um, it's the site is extremely visible and accessible, and you know the infrastructure and layout. We've already said you know, 17 columns, and um, it, you know we're looking at it as one complete mural as opposed to 17 different murals. You know, so it's like one big installation is how we're looking at it. But with but with a variety of artists, right? Well, no, that she. We really want to see a bunch of different art. It, it wanted to look like a cohesive art piece. So, so it will be one artist? So it will be, our team will be leading it, and then we'll have two or three artists from Laredo that will be helping with it. Or they'll, you know, they'll also be lead artists on it. Um, so it'll be a team of artists. And so the, the designing the actual murals, or who's? Yeah, so we've done some initial designs. And um, the artist, the local artists, and the community will help refine the designs to make sure that they are, um, you know, culturally relevant and you know, relevant to the radio. So we have like just some, some initial concepts, and then with feedback from the community and the local artists, then they'll get finalized, and then of course input from you all as well, and then you all will give the final, um, you know the final nod to move forward with it. Okay, so when when will the that when will the designs and the artwork be ready for for okay, us? I'll, I'll show you all here in later uh, I think it might be in the next section of the report. That I'm going through. Um, right now we're on location I think mm -hmm. Are you there, Elia? No. Yeah. She, she's not on again, I guess. So they already have an initial design? I guess. But Show us yeah. Next slide. What was the question that you asked?
mass count? Um, I said, I, it seems like she said she was going to show us the initial design they had already come up with. Oh. On the next slide, I think, because I was asking, yeah, since they're taking the lead, her artists are taking the lead, and then our local artists are going to have some input or something, but I'm not quite sure how involved or what that includes. Well, they'll, they'll be very involved in the process. They're going to, to help design, and then they're going to, this will be, um, as I mentioned earlier, a professional development opportunity. Okay. So we're going to teach uh, the local artists that are selected to participate um, how to use this so that potentially they could be the ones leading these types of projects in the future. Oh, okay. So this is like a learning process for our local people. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, so I noticed in some of the slides that you showed from the beginning, there were different, like, there was the yellow, you know, all yellow, and like, a variety of colors, and then there was something that sort of looked like tiles on there, but maybe they're not tiles, they're painted. Well, yes. The, the infrastructure itself has like where it looks almost like brick or like stone kind of uh -huh. facade, and so just working with that facade because it is it is a difficult facade to work with. It's not like artists or muralists especially love a, right. a clean wall, right? Yeah, yeah. this is the opposite of that. Okay. So it, okay. that itself is a challenge as well um, because then the artists have to be. Um, take extra consideration of how they think to make sure that there's paint on every nook and cranny of the right. which is yeah. Okay. And let's see the next part. Okay. Okay. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, so then, just talking about again having the community um, involved in helping finalize the design. You know, we've got these preliminary designs but going through the community engagement process and working with the local artists to really finalize that design so that it is relevant to your community. And then um, also we've talked about doing a community painting day because there's like these wooden bollards that are um, that are near there. And so we worked on a project previously where the community came out and helped paint those bollards. So while the local, while the artists and our artists and the local artists are painting, we can also have community members out there for a day or two of community painting. And then there'll be an invasion ceremony and all of that um, to also help foster that community pride and taking ownership of the mural, the artwork. Okay. And then here's a map, just kind of shows the area. When would we be looking at designs for this? It's coming up. It's coming up soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're almost there. All right. So these are photos. This is what it looks like now. Um, I'll zoom in. You all can see see how it looks like. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. There's like. Yeah. I see. It looks like. Uh, but yeah, it's like brick. Okay. Okay. You see that like up here where it's dark. Mm -hmm. That's the bird droppings. Yeah. All right there. Oh well. Yeah. So it's pretty. It's pretty. It, it's gonna. It's just gonna take a good pressure washing. Yeah. And then there's like other things. So wait. Okay, this is, it's, it's coming, it's coming soon. <laughs> so this just talks about the schedule. Um, we're slightly behind schedule, um, mm -hmm. but we will, so I'll, I'll, I'm gonna have to adjust it. Um, initially we had it painting happening, um, come back, uh, starting in mid-April, so that'll probably get pushed back about a month or so. Uh, I think we'll, we're gonna have to look at what temperatures look like because with this, um, with this mineral paint, we can't paint when it's hotter than 90 degrees. So I know that's a challenge for a little. Um, so we'll kind of have to, you know, figure out the best timeline. We might have to fast track some of this other, uh, some of these other points, so that we can paint in April, maybe May. Not sure how hot it gets there. Um, I mean, just, but we'll, just to give you an idea, figuring that out. Just to give you an idea, Elia, like last month we were still in the late 90s, like. <laughs> it's been pretty hot this year. Okay. It's so hard to know now with everything like, it's like, 
I don't know, Houston is crazy with the weather. Maybe. We'll have all four seasons in one day. Yes. You know, so it's uh, the weather seems to be very more and more unpredictable, right, as the years uh, go by. Um, so hopefully we can find that sweet spot um, and, and, and figure out when to actually get it implemented. So the next section is about the art selection process. I said earlier, this is literally word for word from the master plan, so I won't uh, bore you with it, but this does talk about, you can kind of look on your own, you know, what the panel composition might look like, what's the criteria for scoring um, pr proposals or, or uh, applications from local artists, et cetera, uh, what the scope of work. So, um, the detailed breakdown of the artist responsibilities and deliverables will be forthcoming. Um, once we finish this, uh, this plan and it's accepted um, and we finalize the plan, then we'll have a um, more you know, concrete idea of the artist responsibilities. So just to take you through the visioning process. So when we first presented um, to Council Member Siga there was some um, just very early, these are very, very early concepts. Um, we were looking at, you know, kind of like what are the options of what can we paint of the infrastructure? And what do those different costs look like? And so the you know, least expensive is you're just painting each column a solid color, right? They don't necessarily have to be all the same color, but solid colors, because that's, that's the easiest, so that's the least expensive, or the least variation, versus like the photo on the right, where you've got similar treatment against all columns, but it's a little, takes more time and coordination to say, okay, well, this one's pink and this one's blue. And you know, so that takes more time and a different level of, of paint, right? Oh, here also in this picture on the right, you can see the wooden bollards I'm talking about, about having the community paint these in coordinating colors with what, whatever the final design is there. So option one was, hey, we're just doing the solid colors Option two was we're just repeating some sort of pattern over and over. Option three is different colors for each individual column. So you can see these um, different treatments in option three. And then option four was, oh, but maybe we can add some imagery to these flat sides. And in this case, as you, as you um, go across the columns, it's a flower blooming. So you'll start off down here with like a little seedling and as the column comes, it progresses, right? Um, and so council member Sigadroa kind of zoned in on, she liked that having some sort of figurative element, um, but she also liked the um, these colors, like in the top left, but she didn't like this necessarily, this uh, rainbow <laughs> of colors necessarily. And so she came back and said, well, how about we use some sort of different color combinations? And she gave us the um, idea of using like the palette from the Loteria, right? So you'll see those in bit as well. Um, we also talked about like, you know, what we presented to her. Phase one could be painting and lighting the columns. Um, and then phase two could include, you know, doing the artwork on the ground. Again, these are just very preliminary, definitely not anywhere near final. But we're just kind of giving her some ideas of other places where art could be incorporated within um, within that. So phase two looks like street level, phase three adjacent structures, and then uh, yeah, phase three is still adjacent structures, so that could even be like a basketball court or anything like that. So the round two of the rings, when she said, well, I really like you know the color palette of the Loteria, that's when we came up with these here that you see um, on the right side. And the artist took some liberties and he said, oh, let me play with the Loveria card since that was specifically what, you know, she had mentioned. And, you know, uh, we're not like, we're not stuck on the imagery of the Loveria cards, um, but we kind of want to get the community's feedback. Like, oh, well, do y'all like that? Do y'all not like that? If we do, we do like it. Are there certain images that y'all want to use from Loveria? I mean, obviously for me, first and foremost, is La Rana. It's where it's going to run us. But, you know, looking at imagery like that, or, or do we just do away with that and look at other kinds of imagery that are relevant to the community? And then, so these are, these are like, A is just solid colors, B is solid colors with the design, 
C is solid color with design plus the beams. And this is a more complex design plus the beams. And the reason A, B, C, and D are important is because you'll see in the budgets that we've prepared um, those different options. Like if you go with option, or if the council member decides, I want to go with option C, then there's a cost for that, but allowing her to weigh out option B versus C or, or whatnot. And we had some alternative options of maybe not doing all of the columns. Um, I don't know how I feel about those personally. I personally love the full board, seeing the whole beams and everything done, um, but it's not my decision. Um, and then option two, because again, she liked option, she liked this option with the loteria colors, and then option two, she liked figurative. So the artist just, you know, did a couple of other um, ones, like one's a bird in flight, one's a butterfly, like going from cocoon to full butterfly, etc. As you can see, all the different options there. So in terms of budget and funding sources, the, the funding is, the majority is coming from district aid discretionary funds. Um, she does plan to use the initial 40,000 from, I don't even remember what year that was now, 2018, 2018, ago, right? where each council member had 40 and she never spent hers. Yeah. So she will use that but she's going to also be putting in a lot more funding from her discretionary funds. And... Did, so there, did the discretionary funds... Um, we gave her a, a two options, using mineral paint and using latex paint. Um, you know, this is, this is a large project. It's, it's very huge, so the numbers reflect that. And, but you will see, when you, even the, the paint itself, mineral paint is like five times the cost of latex. Overall, it didn't impact the overall budget that much because all the other costs associated, right? So you still have to have the same lifts. You still have to pressure wash, you know, you still have to, you know, have the traffic control and all that. So all of that, you know, um, at the end of the day, the budgets weren't too far off from each other, so it just made, I think, more makes much more sense to just go ahead and do the mineral paint where you're guaranteed a, a, at least a minimum of 20 years without fading. I was going to ask, uh, uh -huh. I was going to ask, did the discretionary fund increase for the council members this year, or is it the same? Will it remain the same, or is it based on the money that comes in? I think it remained the same. I don't have it in front of me, but I think everyone got the same amount. And if she hasn't used it before, maybe she's pretty mm -hmm. accumulated. Uh -huh. Could I ask something about the budget? Yep. Um, so I have a question, and yeah, how you all figured out the, um, I mean, everything makes sense as far as materials and supplies go, but mm -hmm. my big question right now is the, the salaries that are, or the monies that are being put aside to pay the artists, um, mm -hmm. how did you figure out that, like 90,000? I know that you're working off of square footage, 10,000 versus 25,000, but yeah. I'm just curious. It is based that. on, based on the amount of time and the number of artists <coughs> that are going to be working on this project. Um, to give you an idea, um, we just did 10,000 square feet in Victoria on infrastructure. We had four artists and it took them 30 days. We did have rain delays because you're always going to have like, oh, now it's raining, cannot use that paint anywhere near water. So if it rains, it's a, it's a day off for the artists, you know? So it is based on the amount of time and the number of artists that are working on the project. Okay, so you don't figure it out by square footage? No, normal, when, you get, when you get into these big, like, if you're doing, like, let's just say a 2,000 square foot mural, then yeah, you know, we would use the square footage model. But in this case, once you go beyond, once you go beyond, like, let's just say 2,000 square feet, it, it then just really more becomes time, because then if we were to use square footage, 10,000 square feet times, let's just say $30 is the average price for a mural, Right. you know, you're looking at 300,000. Right, versus 148 for option option A. Right. So 
I have another question about the local artist coordinator workshop facilitation. Are y'all, like how is this um, figure being, how did you come up with this figure? Like, is there a number just, of workshops that are gonna be done? I know you talked about community engagement and having like a community painting, but how, how did it, I mean, I'm just curious, like how did that jump? Did we come up with a number? I mean, yes. it's just based on our experience, just what, other, what we've done in other places. But do you, um, have a, do you have a number of workshops that you're planning per month or? No, because the workshop, the workshop is really only for the artists that are selected. Oh, so this is just like professional development? Yes, yeah, to help professionally develop and facilitate the, the um, workshops to um, get the local artists up to speed. Okay, those are my questions, thank you. Yeah. Okay, does anybody else have any other questions about the budget? Well, it's hard for us to see it because we're just looking at, at it on the computer. Mm -hmm. And so, I, yeah, I obviously am going to go through it when I can see it better. Okay, yeah, can you also um, receive it by we, email? We were emailed this, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so, yeah, I can, I can open it up after this and we can go through it, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, and I'll feel free to um, send you questions. Okay. Either through Maria or directly to me, but you all, if you don't have my email address, you know, get it from Maria. Um, but yeah, feel free to um, reach out to me and ask me any questions you all have because we do, um, since we are already behind, since y'all didn't meet for them last time, we're trying to get um, you guys' as final well, as soon as possible. We're hoping to get it tonight, but if we can't get it tonight, then we do need to get it as soon as possible so we can move forward. And the next section talks about community, community engagement, marketing and communications. Uh, I've already talked a lot about this, but you know, just again, engaging the local artist community, um, involve, involving them in the implementation process, having the skill building sessions with them, um, you know, creating uh, networking opportunities for them. Um, questions, right, about the workshops? I do have in here, um, you know, offering sessions, uh, workshops, detailing history techniques and significance of mural art that we thought could be facilitated by local artists or local arts organizations as well. Um, and that's just to, again, you know, teaching local artists, maybe not necessarily the exact process that we're using other than the ones that are selected for this project, but other artists who might just want to learn more about mural painting and what that process looks like. Um, so we can also help develop um, those workshops but uh, work by working with like local arts organizations to um, do those um, workshops. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, that'd be really nice to leave that here with our, as an opportunity for our artists here. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I forgot that we had, that we had put that in there. Really? Um, <laughs> that. We'll have the, again, your, marketing communications, we'll have a lot of different materials, uh, web-based information, media release, advertising, um, you know, online and social media advertising, word of mouth and outreach. Um, I have to tell you, um, Victoria, I know it's a much smaller city than you all, but man, the engagement that the city has seen on their social media has been incredible. Like immediately after we were, at first everybody was really skeptical, especially those um, in the city, the mayor and everybody was super skeptical about the project. Now they've already asked us like, please, you want to do another one like right away? Um, because they saw how much the community um, felt like this has been a long time. Like we've been needing this for a long time, right? And just like the appreciation from the community has been so overwhelming, I think both to the city and to us, I mean, it's been incredible. And I think it, this project could have a very similar effect in Laredo. Um, not that you all don't have art already. They really didn't have like, anything. You all have some, but I don't think that uh, there's anything like super large scale. You know, so this would be. Uh, I think this this kind of project is is like the launching pad for a lot of engagement from the community, and then hopefully 
going on to a lot of other things, right? And all of this advertising and getting people involved, I think that's exactly what we need. Because, um, I mean, we're all involved in this on this commission, but I mean, we really need to get our whole community involved. And I think that's great. That's what we want. Yes. And that's what Council Member Seattle wants. Like, she wants this to, I think she really has done everything she can to try to move this project forward because she wants to show everybody and the other council members and everybody that this is what we can all do. You know? Yeah. Just to be persistent and make it work. Right? Yes. We're and agree. So, uh, uh, next session is about stakeholders. The, the, the first are the residents of that neighborhood, you know, who are, I'm sure um, have suffered from history of probably disinvestment in their neighborhood. Um, so um, helping them with their quality of life and, and whatnot. Um, the residents of District 8, adjacent businesses, the Fine Arts and Culture Commission, you all are primary stakeholders. Um, we have secondary stakeholders, I think all of the local arts organizations. Um, you know, we want to get everybody helping us communicate about this project. So we'll be reaching out to you. We'll be out there and the Laredo Center for the Arts and Gallery 201, the, the, all the, the fine arts departments and all of those that we engage during that master planning process. We want to re-engage the project to help us get the word out to the local community, all the artist community and just the community at large. And so I think with um, all of the Tech stakeholders of all of those individual organizations together will really help propel the project. And I mean, in conclusion, we just you know we want to we want to help make this grand project for the city of Laredo. Um, you know, similar to Florida, it's been a long time coming, and um, you know, like you just said, it's you know hopefully we'll help propel more projects um, like this to come. And in the appendix, I just have. You know, this is just a, the form that we used when we did the site assessment and kind of some of the things that we were looking for when we were out there. Um, this is showing, in, in our kickoff meeting, we showed like different examples of what others have done that kind of helped narrow down the focus of what, um, you know, council member kind of had for a vision of this project. Um, and then we showed like different examples of lighting, and different examples of other parks and sports courts and things like that that can also be enhanced. And so just lots of different examples for what that site overall could look like, not just the columns, but even beyond the columns. Right. And, and then in our second presentation um, is when we presented the, that initial concepts of design, but we went through kind of the pros and cons of latex versus mineral and enamel paint and the different pros and cons of the artist selection process. And, you know, we talked through the community engagement approach and, you know, definitely um, council members together all wanted to have multiple points of community engagement. Artists, the artists and the local community and events and all of this. So everything that you see highlighted are things that were um, things that we had suggested and also things that she uh, was really gravitated towards in this process. And so this is kind of showing like the off options that which you've already seen in right. the presentation that I presented to them. Um, and that's it. That's that's the that's the project plan in full. And I'm happy to answer any other questions you all might have. Only to say Elia that <coughs> I thank you. This is a very comprehensive plan. And you did a real good job of explaining it to us. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Any other comments or questions? No, I'm just really excited. I mean, it is exciting. Is Very long exciting. time. We really need to get things like this going in the radio. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really wonderful. I don't know if, you, if you'd like to approve approve the plan at this time. I, it is being I held up. Motion to accept the proposal and yeah. approve the plan. So he wants to move. <coughs> second. It's been moved and seconded. 
Okay, so we're approving the plan, but what are we approving? <laughs> the design? We're no, not that's... picking designs yet. We're not making decisions. No, we're not making decisions about the plan, the, plan, the process. Um, you know, everything that I've talked about, the artist selection, community engagement, workshops, all of that. The, the design is still yet to be selected. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the, the ones that I showed you, the uh, because we would like to present two options to the community to have the final decision on we go with this option or that option. And those are like the base that we already have, but we want to make them, you know, we want to get the input of the community to finalize those options. And then so once those ones are finalized, then it goes back out to the community to vote on the option. That so they what we're accepting is a vote. plan. What we're accepting is a plan, right? The procedure. What the, the plan, plan and the plan procedure. And the procedure. Yeah. So that they can go, yes. so they can move forward with the request for all the information that they need. There's, yes. a, there's a time plan included in the plan. Yes. And approving the plan allows us to move forward with the next step, which would be to the, do the art, the local artist open call. All right, so the plan and procedure has been um, approved. So what we do, do we do an all in favor? Yes, if there's a motion well, and a second. Yeah, there's a motion for a second. Yeah, now we move to uh, vote. I'd like to real, real quickly just, just for clarification, like, let me uh, amend my motion real quick. So because the motion is to uh, adopt the proposal, move forward with the plan, contingent upon the selection of artists and design. Is that fair? And okay. also, I just want to add the budget. And the budget, because there's two different budgets here. One is yeah, for one the is mineral paint, and the other one is for latex. Is. And, and budget. Right. One. And I just also want to reiterate that you all will also approve the artists that are selected. Like once the committee, the selection committee, um, chooses the artist, then it'll, it'll come back to you all to give the final approval, as well as the design. Okay. Great. So are we voting on yeah, this? Yeah, did we vote? Yes, yeah. motion uh, to adopt. Yeah, you already made your motion, yeah, right? right. Yeah. It was seconded. It was By me, yeah. and I accept the amendment. Okay, so no. then now we continue. No. All in favor? All in favor. Who's running this? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Let's see. Aye. Okay. So, thank you, Elia. So we've been moved, seconded, and approved. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Elia. Council members, you know, also greatly appreciate you. <laughs> yes. Um, Thank you, Elia. Okay. Thank you, Elia. Uh, Once again. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. I'll, okay. be, I'll be in touch soon. Okay. Read through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Our next item is a 2024 Poet Laureate uh, nomination and uh, applications. Okay. In your packet, you have a a copy of the nomination form and the guidelines. It, it's the same one we used the first time. Uh, what we just need is to finalize the dates of when are we going to start advertising this and the deadline for submissions of applications. How was it done last time, if I may ask? Was it done at the end of a year or? It, it, it was uh, 20, 22 to 20. No, 21 to 22, two year, two year okay. uh, term. And then the, the commission voted to extend it because one of those years was COVID. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. So right now it's uh, Rosa Maria de Llano. Mm -hmm. And her term's scheduled to okay. December, at the end of December. Yeah, but didn't we want to extend it for her? We did. We did. We did it for okay. a year. A year, an extra year. We extended it for a year. Right. For right. Rosa Maria Leandro to continue as well. Oh. She, she did an yeah. excellent job. She, you know, she, she, she did an excellent job. She did the, the minimum and then some. She, she went she above and beyond. beyond. Yeah. I'm so proud of what she did. And, 
Um, so are we voted to continue to keep her on for another year or what? No, we're, we're going to move to, I think, that we should move to have everything, um, the nomination started, the applications, everything in January. January? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, okay. Three weeks to end, yeah. so do, do you want it open and January 1st? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Want to leave it open for a month or should we? I don't remember how we did it last year. I know that uh, we did struggle a little bit to bring in applicants. Remember, we had to extend it. Uh huh. If we can, we can set the time frame and if we can extend it. Yeah, uh -huh. I think that would be that would be a good idea. What do you think, Gail? Maybe three weeks, two weeks. What do y'all think? What? To, uh, to ask for application? Yeah. For nominations. We're seeing. But we're in holidays right now. <laughs> right. So well, we're it going in January first. We're, we're going to start in January? Yes. That's what we, yeah. We're, okay. We're doing it in January. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, like two, three, two weeks. three weeks, right? Three yeah. weeks, I think, would be. And if we have to extend it, we extend it one more week and say, we take all of January. To do it, uh -huh. and then we proceed. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll have our poet laureate in February. Yeah, uh, the twenty second, Monday to three months. So yeah, yeah, she could do it till the end of that week, the twenty sixth. Okay, I was thinking the end of the ninth. I mean, by the nineteenth. Yeah, the nineteenth. We can extend it if we if need we to. to. The twenty second would be fine, but I think the nineteenth or the twenty second. Yeah. We meet, uh, we, meet, we meet on the 18th of January, that's where we speak. And hopefully we'll have some application, I can put that on the agenda to go yeah, over. That's yeah, that's true. Yes. And then um, yeah. the next yeah. city comes Yeah, and let's see how far we've got yeah. by then. Okay. Hopefully we'll make a decision. Yeah. If a decision is made by then, maybe we can go to council on the 5th of February. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Anything else on, on the uh, Poet Laureate? Anything else that we want to discuss with that? Mm -hmm. All right. And that takes We're care good. of that. Do we promote the, how do we promote this? Just we, on the website of the city or? The city's website, yes. The library or? We can put it on the library too. But the, the applications will go to city secretary and then he will forward them oh, right. right. They don't, I mean, we can share it on social media, right? Yes, right, definitely. Yeah. We can promote it to the mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'll look up what we did last time. It's been three years. So yeah. we can do the same. Yeah, just to make sure we get applicants. All right, anything else for discussion? Um, if not, we go to the uh, scheduling of our next meeting. You did, you did approve the date, yes. Yes, yes. 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 I, I just wanted to make an announcement. Um, the Laredo Center for the Arts in conjunction with the, I don't know if, if Melissa talked about it in the announcements, but the Laredo Center for the Arts in conjunction with um, the Mexican American uh, Museum of Texas Culture, uh, Mexican American Museum of Culture is uh, having an opening uh, session for a exhibit called um, La Tamalada, the Te a Texas Tradition. And it features writers from all across the state who uh, participated in a, in their inaugural event, which was last December in Dallas at City Hall. And uh, like that, we're going to mirror their event. The, the exhibit will be at the Center for the Arts. The opening will be at 7 o'clock. There'll be a really brief presentation. And then there'll be uh, tamales, mm -hmm. sir. Yeah. Uh, What's the date again? The, uh, it's it's uh, December 9th at 7 o'clock. Laredo Center for the Arts Mezzanine. And uh, I believe that three of the writers, even though two of them now live away from Laredo, uh, were selected. And so they're gonna be present as well as, member, as well as members of the board of the, of the museum. This exhibit was recently exhibited at the Texas State Fair. And I'm hoping that, that they will uh, see fit to maybe bring their second pop, uh, exhibit 
which was the, the, uh, the role of women in the Battle of the Alamo. Wow. And so there was a lot of people that showed up at, the, at this event to act, wow. that could actually trace their roots to some of these women from the sanitary. Wow. So anyway, seven o'clock, it's free. And uh, there'll be some tamales and some semita, some semita and some coffee and soft drinks and hope you all can make it. And, and the event is for, I mean, the, the, uh, the displays are for two weeks in case you can't go that night for the open show. So you want to meet everybody, that's what that's what all right, so our next meet is January 18th, here at 5.30. Okay. All right. Thank you. 5.30. What day was it? The 18th. 18th. Of January. January. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so we move for. Um, I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.